Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Seller Board Show podcast. Today's episode is going to be dedicated to logistics and the way that you can improve your profitability when reducing your shipment transportation costs. And today's guest on the podcast is Michael Fennick. He is the co-founder of SkewDrop, which is a software designed to make improvements to your supply chain and see how you can save money and time while having less product in your 3PL warehouse and actually becoming more cost-effective. We've discussed the risks that private label sellers have when shipping products from China to the US, the problems and the ways that SkewDrop and the model that it works with can help sellers solve these problems. So it was a really interesting talk. I suggest you stick to the end of this episode. And besides that, as usual, if you haven't tried Sellerboard by now, go to sellerboard.com, see the demo account, see what Sellerboard is all about and how it can help you improve profitability, understand your numbers and automate some of the processes inside your Amazon business. But without further ado, let's go straight to the episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Sellerboard Show podcast. Uh, today we have a very special guest. His name is Michael Fennick. He is the founder of the SKU Drop. And we are going to be talking about uh, logistics and the ways that you can improve your costs and actually improve profitability. Uh, Michael, hello. Thank you so much for coming to the podcast. Yeah, Alex, it's uh, great to be on your show and hello to the audience. And I'm very excited to speak to you about all things logistics and in particular SKUDROP. And um, as you mentioned, you know, profitability is very important and, and we solve that problem. So thanks for having me. Sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to um, an interesting discussion because uh, as you've mentioned in our uh, previous talk right now before the recording, you know, uh, I like the point that... Uh, some but or maybe most of the sellers focus too much on sales and product research and they they kind of uh, drop out of the face when you have to look around what's going with your logistics and try to improve that you know to reduce costs so i think this is a very good point to start but before we do that uh, i would really like to know more about you what's your uh, amazon seller journey because you are an amazon seller and how you got into e-commerce in the first place so could you please uh, elaborate a little bit in that? Yeah, sure. I've been in e-com for about five years now. Um, my wife um, got in it, into it together. Um, I've got a, a tech startup background. I've, I've built um, sort of media technology and partnered with major corporations in America and worked with famous celebrities. And I remember I was sitting down um, in a hotel in Beverly Hills and I said to mm -hmm. myself, I want to get a side hustle where I can make money while I sleep and it's sort of, you know, minimal management, but obviously very profitable. And obviously e-com came to mind and my wife and I first started doing drop shipping. So we had over 700 SKUs drop shipped from China to the US using Google shopping. Right. And that was actually quite good. Very tough. Um, when you're competing with Amazon in the US, you know, good, our shipping was two to three weeks, whereas in Amazon FBA, it's like one day or two days in prime, whatever. So we, it was a very difficult um, process, but we learned a lot. Then we decided to turn our focus to Amazon FBA. And to cut a long story short, since 2019, we created a brand. Uh, we've got three SKUs. Um, we're pretty much the alpha ASIN in our niche and doing over a million dollars a year. And it's just a great um, business that has our products have really good, what we call USP, unique selling proposition. Yeah. which makes us stand out from the crowd. And um, we, we do well and, and, and stuff like that. And then um, we also have a really big community in Australia called the Endgame Network, where we nurture sort of people helping themselves stuff on Amazon. And um, sort of amongst all that during COVID, we then started SKUDROP, which was solving a really big problem in the logistics side, as you mentioned before. Sounds, sounds really, uh, I mean, not intense, but it's, it's a lot. Sounds like a lot in, in a short period yeah. of time. Uh, I have yes. a question here that comes to my mind. Um, I've talked to some of the um, startup founders or maybe uh, software uh, founders mm. that uh, also yep. work with Amazon and provide services for Amazon sellers that 
originated as Amazon sellers themselves, and most of them exited. So they they sold their Amazon business and just focused, you sure. know, on developing the software and um, delivering delivering it to the market. But you are currently also selling on Amazon. So I would like to know uh, how how is that experience? I mean, uh, did you think about exiting, or maybe what uh, motivates you to keep the business running? Are you planning to to keep on selling? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, <clears throat> my wife and I spoke about whether we want to be in a position where we could exit. Um, but I think our initial sort of thoughts at this point in time is to keep the brand because it's doing very well. Uh, we've got very good suppliers, very good team around us that can help us manage the brand. So we think, well, we're sellers, it's profitable, let's just keep it. Yeah. Um, also too, for me and, and my wife, it's just like, well, we've got a big um, community of Amazon sellers and I'd, I'd like to be in the game still. And then obviously whatever we learn, we can pass on and sort of be still be a seller. So um, yeah, at this point in time, we're going to keep it. Um, and again, we're solving a really big problem in Amazon. Um, and being a seller, I think, can help me keep focused on what the sellers are going through to better yeah. serve their needs. Yeah, that's 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 uh, yeah. uh, that's amazing. I mean, um, from my previous discussions, you know, with the guys that just uh, reached a point when they understood that it's time to exit, time to sell the business. For me, uh, I'm not an Amazon seller, but for me, it was like you know a sign that. Amazon is like an, a game and that you eventually will have to exit. You will have to to sell your business and move on with something else that will be, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe uh, more sustainable or will be less stressful or I don't know why, what is the motive behind this. But, uh, you know, the, your example for me is inspiring. It means that uh, uh, you actually can keep moving on. So, yeah, it, it's a good... Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, yeah, that's probably the goal, but then there are a few people that are actually, this is their full-time job. Yeah. So they've left the nine to five. They're not working for anybody. They're solely working for their own brand that they've built up. So this is their source of income. So there are a lot of people who have transitioned from nine to five to selling on Amazon full-time and they, you know, I, I suppose may consider it, but that's putting food on their table. So they want to nurture it as best as they can and keep it sort of profitable and still earn money from it yeah definitely definitely all right um my next question is um you said that uh the idea of creating skew drop came to you uh while being uh already an active amazon seller so i probably you've uh, understood at some point that there's an uh uncovered pain point for amazon sellers or maybe a problem that you could solve how what was that point when you realized that and how it came to you i mean what, what, where the idea came from? Yeah, it was a good, good question. So it was during COVID. Um, obviously, I think it was about a two-year period. There was lockdowns and all and all that sort of stuff. And I remember during COVID, there was a point in time where logistics and cost of containers went through the roof. What would be, say, a $4,000 container? We, we heard some stories where that $4,000 container was being sold for like twenty five, thirty thousand dollars So what happened was uh -oh. a lot of people got got surprised because no one's ever really sort of thought about the logistics side of things. And when these prices went up, everybody went, hang on a minute, I'm losing money. Shipping is really expensive. We need to do something about it. So myself, my business partner here in Australia and a number of other key Amazon sellers in China, in Miami, in um, Florida, um, we got together and we actually had a Zoom call. And the agenda of the Zoom call was we asked ourselves a question. How can we solve the logistics problem? Now, if you think about the existing supply chain tactic, it comprises of this. And I've got a presentation which I can touch on this later. But basically, your products are ready in, in China, let's say, for example. You try and, get, you try and email a number of freight forwarders to get um, different quotes once you get a quote, you send your whole order over to America, you store it in an expensive US 3PL, and then from there you do SPD LTL shipments into Amazon. Yeah. We looked at that model and thought, hang on a minute, how can we make it more efficient? Now, one of our Chinese partners says, I don't know what you guys do, why you have a US 3PL. And we leaned in and said, what are you talking about? He says, I've never used a 3PL in America, and I've never ever shipped a full container. And we said, hang on a minute. Well, and we explored this more, and basically, 
Skewdrop was born. So what Skewdrop is basically, it's an innovative supply chain tactic where Skewdrop becomes your storage facility in China, which is much cheaper than a US 3PL. Right. We become your logistics partner as well, where we'll give you multiple shipping options to ship directly to Amazon FBA. Right. Eliminating all the costs of the 3PL, <laughs> which means you've got more efficiency, which means you make more profit margin. But the key thing is this, a big discovery is that we organize three or four months worth of stock and we do shipments every three months. The skew drop model, we look at doing small, regular weekly shipments. Weekly. And mathematically, weekly or fortnightly, depending on the shipping rhythm that you want to use. But we've worked out mathematically that if you do smaller weekly shipments and eliminate a 3PL, you will save on your supply chain, which will then revert to increasing profit margin for your SKUs. Now, recently we had one of the biggest Amazon accountants in the world actually used SKUdrop and they, he sent 106 CBM, which is about one and a half um, containers to SKUdrop. He did 42 shipments and he actually ran the numbers and said, right, I'm going to test SKUdrop versus my old supply chain model, which is all container, over to US 3PL. Yeah. Cut a long story short, we saved him 9% wow. on his supply chain. Wow. And we also, there was a, a, a number of other benefits as well, which we could touch on, but yeah. we it proved our hypothesis and we've reinvented the supply chain tactic. And the beauty about Stewdrop is that we become your storage facility in China. We manage your logistics, multiple shipping options, direct in Amazon, all managed by a beautiful software tool that can show you what's stored, how much inventory you have, and in a click of a button, we can do a shipping plan, which takes a long time if you've got many SKUs, literally in three seconds. And it's a time saver. There's a whole host of other benefits of SKU Drop, which we'll get into as we progress through the interview. But yeah, it's I, exciting I, because we're so happy to see our customers with efficiency, which then results to profit more margin I, so that's I already, what we're for <laughs> i that, that that's amazing i uh, can't wait to see the presentation first of all right right now yes. you already sold yeah. the idea to me but before we do that yeah. um i have a question about the let's say the, the profile of your uh, regular client or an average client so uh me as an amazon seller let's say how big uh, uh, i should be to you know to kind of uh, uh address your services and see if you can help me. I mean, you mentioned before that you are not shipping uh, necessarily full containers. So uh, what, starting with what, what volumes of, of merchandise can, can I, can I start with a skew drop? So basically to answer the first part, um, who is skew drop suit, suited to? It could be suited for a beginner or a seller with, a really, really large seller. Okay. Now we've got, we've got everybody in the spectrum. We've got the beginners all the way up to, um, sellers who are sending, you know, multiple containers a month. <clears throat> now, the thing is, Skewjob is a consolidation warehouse in China. So we've got all, everyone's cartons under the one roof. And from there, when people do their weekly shipments, we can fill up containers and then ship them and then obviously disperse them out to the fulfillment centers. So anyone from beginner to a large seller, we've got them all and they're loving the efficiencies and obviously the time savings as well. All right. All right. Got it. Got it. So basically uh, you're uh, kind of flexible with uh, you know, the services uh, that you provide for the, for the beginners and, and the top sellers. All right. Yeah. Got it. Uh, I have a question here about um, working in China. Um, yes. My question is, there has been a lot happening in China recently, in the past year. I mean, uh, from full lockdown to opening the borders, and there are there were a lot of talks about the sentiment of, you know, the Chinese people and the changes, how it affected the uh, economic situation, the prices yeah, in the mainland and stuff like that. So uh, maybe a general question. Um, how, how did you feel that the uh, climate 
or your type of services changed in the past year in China and did it or didn't? Look, to be honest, we, I mean, we haven't really noticed um, anything to, I suppose, what's the word I'm looking for, um, to be concerned at all about our dealings with China. Um, we've actually got Chinese partners on the ground in China and, and full staffing of the warehouse and, and operations team as well. Um, so from a skew drop perspective, it's business as usual. And um, yeah, we've even during parts of COVID, we, it was just business as usual. Um, if anything, and, and I suppose all freight forwarders would have felt this, there would have been a couple of little delays with COVID breakouts, but I suppose every seller experienced that depending on where their supplier was located in China. Um, but yeah, we haven't had any issues in regards to the operational side of things out of China. Got it. Got it. Thanks. All right. Um, so uh, you've started uh, telling us about uh, how what, what problems uh, SKU Drop solves and uh, some of the details of how it works and the, the benefits. And you mentioned that you have a presentation that you uh, can share with us. Yes. So uh, yeah. if you if you can uh, do it yeah, right sure. now, I'll pass it to you. Um, Yep, no worries. I'll just share. If you could let me share screen, and then yep. I can just um, of course, I'll um, try and do that right now. Okay, so this is only a very, very short presentation. Let me the, just get rid of all the you, yeah panels and everything, and then just go from there. So um, obviously, I can double my cash flow with a skew drop supply chain. I'll talk about that after the presentation. Um, but this is a very, very short presentation. It gives people a very good overview of um, what we do. So basically, as mentioned before, this is what we've been doing all these years. This is a standard supply chain tactic where the product is ready and we email freight forwarders back and forth trying to get the best quote. Um, then once we work out who the freight forwarder is, um, we pay for our entire order up front. So that's like between, you know, depending on the order, it could be five to 15 or $20,000 up front out of your business. And because you're sending your entire order over to the US, you're risking the whole three months or four months worth of stock because all that order is on the water. Yeah. So if the container gets pulled aside for a customs inspection, business continuity for those SKUs or SKU will be affected. So there's an increase in risk. Um, obviously, you've got to pay your full tariff up front. Um, obviously, you're doing the full order and three or four days out from port, you'll manage your tariffs and have to pay that. Then you land in a 3PL and that's where the fun begins because you've got to pay receiving fees, container clean out fees, storage fees, software fees. It's well, There's a lot of different fees involved in terms of using a 3PL. And then once your goods are stored, then you've got to do shipping plans and then pay for um, small parcel delivery or less than, less than truckload shipments into Amazon, which is more money, more people handling your goods. And this is what people are currently doing. Um, and, and and we made a really, really big discovery that there's sellers that that are doing things completely different. And they're, they, they're Chinese sellers or Eastern sellers with these different strategies. They're not suppliers. They're very sophisticated Amazon sellers. And what they do is they store in China. They do smaller weekly shipments direct to Amazon. And the really big surprise is they don't send full containers. It's like a supermarket. If you sell 15 apples for the week, yeah. they'll just replace the 15 apples. And that's the similar thing that these this strategy is doing. So off the back of that, SKU Drop was born. And this is the solution. You store in China. We become your storage facility in China. Um, we, we become your logistics partner. We can manage your weekly shipments direct to Amazon. And it's all managed via software so the software sits in between your seller central account the warehouse and we manage it all for you and we can do a bit of a demonstration in regards to that sure now if we look at the solution from a skew drop perspective this is what the supply chain now looks like when using skew drop you send your products to skew drop now you might be producing out of china and then you can store in our warehouse in china in iwu now one really big advantage of storing in China, and this has happened about three or four times already to existing customers. Now, let's say, for example, you store all your goods in a US 3PL and you discover 
a major issue with your product. How are you going to fix that effectively? You're going to get parts from China sent over to the 3PL in America. They're going to try and fix it. Now, when your goods are stored in our stew drop warehouse in China and your supply might be, might be 40 minutes up the road, they can come and pick your goods up and fix it. Right. Okay? Right. So when you're storing in, in our warehouse, you can create a shipping plan, which is really, really easy. We can show you that. But here's where it gets very interesting. You do you have you pay smaller freight costs up front because you're now doing a weekly shipment. You might send 300 units to Amazon FBA, and that shipment might cost you 275 dollars. You're potentially keeping, depending on the size of your order, you're potentially keeping, you know, between five hundred fifteen twenty thousand dollars in your pocket, right? Now, because we're doing smaller weekly shipments, we're reducing risk. Because if you have a weekly shipper that gets pulled aside for a customs inspection, business continuity can still flow because you know you've got shipments coming up behind that original shipment. You're paying smaller tariff amounts up front, again, keeping more cash in your pocket. You're eliminating 3PLs and all those expensive 3PL fees. And there's no need for SPD, LTL shipments direct into um, mm. Amazon. So you're saving money there as well. So that that's basically the the um, presentation. And what I'll do is I'll just stop sharing. What I'll do now is I'll, I'll if you like, we can discuss that, but then we can do a, a software demonstration. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. Thank you for sharing the presentation. Uh, I have a question that comes to my mind right now. So... Uh, if I get correctly how how uh, how it works, basically, um, in order to have a weekly shipment, and uh, you need to always have uh, products on the water, so just in in That's batches yeah. that follow uh, and yeah. mm, each other. So this is so this what is... a lot of sellers do. Yeah. So what a lot of sellers do is they have at least forty two days worth of stock in Amazon FBA, because yeah. their next shipment potentially with regular service is about forty two days. But what we do is we have 42 days worth of stock, but we just send whatever we sold for the week before, we just replenish. Yeah. I'll send in 300 units this week. Next week, 310 units, depending on what we sell. Obviously, we forecast as well in terms of Prime Day and sort of beef up the stock amounts, you know, to, to make sure we've got the stock. But um, basically, that's it. Smaller weekly shipments and mathematically works out. Obviously, with removing 3PLs, it's a much more efficient supply chain. Like I said before, um, the Amazon accountant did the test. He did 42 shipments and worked out he saved 9%. Now, a seller of his size is massive, 9% significant. He also worked out, which is really interesting, he worked out that for, for a particular SKU, he needed to hold $500,000 worth of stock for that SKU. But with the SKU drop model, he worked out if he could reconfigure his ordering with his, his supplier he could hold half the amount of in inventory and still service the same amount of sales. So what he worked out, SKUDROP can actually create internal financing because you don't have to hold as much stock, but yeah. yet you can still service the same amount of sales. And that's huge because we know businesses like Amazon businesses are very cash intensive. Yes, yes. And when we want to scale, scaling's difficult unless we get finance. So if we can keep that internal financing in the business, well, then we got might, potentially may have money spare to launch that third or fourth product. It kind of reminds me, you know, of the Japanese just-in-time production model. So when you have parts coming in to the production line just in time when you need them, so this is basically yep. what happens with the merchandise if you use Q, SKU drop. So you just uh, supply exactly as much as you need without having your yes. cash f frozen in a lot of merchandise uh, in the 3PL warehouse. That, that's actually a very good point. But, um, you know, there's been time with our brand, we'd do a, a shipment and we'd send over, this is before SKU drop, we'd send over three or four months worth of stock and we'd be paying $15,000, $20,000 in shipping. I did a shipping plan this week wow. and it was, um, I used regular service truck last mile and I think it was $169. Nice. So, Again, think about the cash flow. Yeah. Keeping, I'd rather the money in my pocket than sending a full order, which increases the risk and then paying a, a freight forwarder up front. So 
logically, when you think about the model, it, it just makes complete sense. And as a result, we've nearly got 500 brands using our service and we have hardly marketed at all. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. This is uh, product-led growth. So just uh, the product sells That's itself. That's exactly right. <laughs> it sells itself. Exactly yeah. right. People do the maths and they go, yeah. yes, it makes sense and then they enjoy it. Uh, Actually, it's it's kind of similar with seller board because you know uh, we have a business model that uh, makes seller board. We'll try to make it as as affordable as possible uh, for for most of the people to try. You know, so it's like fifteen dollars a month to to start. And when the pe- people right. do the math, they really understand that they don't need the more expensive tools. So it is basically uh, yeah. why, why why you also have that's this, exactly right this model. All right, now yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I may. I'm really curious to see uh, how a shipping plan looks like. If you could show me, yeah, and uh, no problem. So I can do that. Yeah, and and another question, maybe if you can touch on that, uh, is the forecasting. I mean, how based on what do you do the forecasting and how how it works? Yes, what I'll do is let me just um, I'll just get the uh, here we go here okay, and I'll just I'll go back to Zoom. Um, so. Um, we have a lot of features coming in. One of those features is obviously um, forecasting. We don't have that feature at the moment. Right. But basically um, what I do, what we do with our brand is we look at historical sales, what we've been selling. We look at what's coming up. And we plan accordingly in terms of the volume we ship directly to Amazon FBA. But I'll just go now to you drop and you let me know if you can see the screen. Yep. Okay. So basically... Um, this is the SKU drop dashboard. So first of all, you'll see these information panels across the top. We've got 800 total units stored. We've got 40 cartons that are stored in our warehouse. We've got 0.22 of a cubic meter stored. And we've got an information panel here that shows the cartons in prep, what's incoming to the warehouse, and what's currently in transit to Amazon. Um, And then we've got a number of tables underneath the main dashboard area where we've got products being prepared. So there's three cartons that are being shipped to um, Amazon FBA and there's the FBA ID. Um, We've got stored products. We've got um, two products here and there's 10 cartons and 30 cartons. And then we've got our uploaded products. Now, this is a little bit of a sneak peek, Alex. Right. Um, We haven't released this feature, but in the very near future, at the moment we can ship to the U.S., but we are opening up the UK market, which nice. is really exciting. So now you could have all your goods in China under the skew drop warehouse um, roof. And then you can say, okay, I want to send this stock to the US, this stock to the UK. So that's actually, this is a, this is actually a, a real account connected to a seller central account and UK shipping is coming up very soon. Now to create a shipping plan, this is how simple it is. You go to send price to Amazon. Okay, click here. Right. And we just wait for it to load. It might be more internet, actually. It's a little bit slow. Let me just refresh it. Maybe. Oh, actually, it's just to log me out one second. I'll just log back in if that's sure. all right. Sorry about that. No just problem. Just time down. I really like this this uh, animated graphic, you know, kind of makes yeah. me think of how many products are currently on the water. So it, uh, yes, it exactly. Is- Always, always products on the water. So I think I could yes. watch it all day. Yes. So send price to Amazon. So this is what we have. We can select our market if we want to send to the US or the UK. And basically, the first step is to choose whether you want to go C or Air. We have both options. Okay? In this case, we're going to go C. Um, and there's the product name, the SKU, and the available cartons. For this particular product, Let's say I want to replenish 200 units. I've got 10 cartons and you'll see here there's 200 units. From here, all I do is press this button, create shipping plan within Seller Central. We're talking to Seller Central at the moment and the plan's done. Yeah. There's the FBA ID. It's shipping to GYR3. That's the fulfillment center on the West Coast. Units expected, 200. Got it. Plan's done. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to calculate the shipping estimate to get these cartons to Amazon FBA. So once we press this button, there it is. It's all done. So here's our cargo details, master cartons, cubic meters, weight. 
And our, our shipping algorithm has worked out that the best rate is a CBM rate with truck delivery. And this is what we show all our customers. Now we've got regular, medium, express truck delivery, and we've got regular, medium, express FedEx or UPS delivery. Now there's 1186 data points that has manipulated your carton sizes, the FBA warehouse destination, and we've compared truck CBM to kilogram rates, and we've given you all these different options. So you may mm -hmm. select this one. You can filter everything, lowest price, lowest to highest price. You may select that. Or if you want the fastest shipping, mm -hmm. this is the fastest shipping and that's the cost. And it's right. all laid out. And once again, I want to point out, usually when freight forwarders give you a quote, they either give you a kilogram rate or a CBM rate. We compare both rates. And we go, which, what rate wins? And we provide that for you with multiple last mile options. Okay. So Managed. now let's say, for example, we want to select the express, which is 25 to 40 days into Amazon. With quicker checking times, you can expand for more details. It's using Matson CLX Express. We've got our prep trees as well, which is $2.75 per carton. We select that, we confer the shipping plan and send the carton labels to our warehouse and that's all done. Our warehouse right now has all the information for this shipment as well as your FBA labels. Now for everybody watching who uses an F, um, a 3PL in the US, I know and I've been there myself, you've got to use Excel spreadsheets, you've got to send emails, it's a nightmare. Skew drop saves a lot of time. Now, if we go back to our dashboard, you'll see there's now 13 cartons in prep. And here's the new products being prepared. Here's the SKU. There's the FBA ID. And that's the demonstration. Time saving efficiency, which can give you increased margin. Nice. That, that looks really simple. I mean, uh, me very simple not 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 being a seller but but you know not being uh, uh exposed to these kind of problems you know that you mentioned the spreadsheets and everything i just can imagine that it's really a process that you have to pay attention a lot of details and take uh, a lot of stuff into consideration when doing these plans but uh the skew drop really looks pretty simple and user-friendly i mean um very yeah yeah it looks re really really good yeah and so what happens from now, if you're a customer of SKUDROP, everything is automated. So when we prep your cartons and put the FBA stickers on, we'll send you an email. Yeah. When the goods have been loaded and shipped, we'll send you an email. Right. When your tariffs are due, we'll actually automatically process the tariffs without you lifting a finger. And then even send you an email with your 7501 entry summary for US customs. Yeah. When when we we even you when we update your tracking IDs, and right, yeah. you get an email. We've updated your tracking IDs. It's all automated. Nice. So you just work out what you need to send. You select, you select the shipping option. Now, one thing, being a seller, we're very conscious of shipping pricing. And we've got some of the most unbelievable logistics partnerships on the planet to ensure we can provide the best possible pricing for our customers. And we've worked really hard to achieve that because we're sellers and we know what sellers want. And well, it was actually while you were doing the demo that one thing came to my mind, and now that you mentioned the logistics partners, it's a, a kind of a win-win situation for them also, because you know with doing regular shipments and you know with the sellers, planning their uh, shipments upfront and for a certain period of time is like a commitment so that you will be using the services of these logistics providers. So it's really like a subscription Absolutely. service for them. I mean, they're getting clients uh, maybe for smaller batches of products, but they're filling up their I, I, containers or, you know, so for a longer period of time, it's sales that you do uh, sure. for, for the future. It's a very good win-win uh, yeah. formula. Underneath the skew drop umbrella, obviously our logistics partners are, are, are enjoying um, 
the increase in volume that we're providing because we're growing so fast. And once again, it's all word of mouth and it's really exciting. Right. And the main thing for us, and it's like yourself, Alex, with your software and seller board, you've identified a need and you provided the solution. And that's what's really important for us. I am a seller, just like the person, the man or the woman watching this this podcast right now. I'm a seller just like you and I understand your needs. And we were hell-bent during COVID, probably the toughest time to launch a business, we were determined to solve this problem because we felt so passionate about wanting people to be more efficient in their supply chains. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's been a it's been a great journey. We've got so many more features coming out too, which um, yeah, I can't wait to to launch and share. That's 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 an amazing. That's inspiring. I really feel uh, the emotion behind this, and I really uh, yeah. can feel you know that you are really involved in developing the product yeah. and the attitude. That, that's amazing, yes. always. All right. Yeah. So uh, I know that um, you prepared uh, a link or uh, I don't know a code for our uh, viewers, listeners, so they can try out the software. Uh, we'll probably uh, share it on the screen. But um, could you please tell yeah. us more, the people that are listening or watching the podcast right now, uh, how they should find your uh, I don't know. First of all, of course, the, the service and maybe uh, follow your activity on social media or basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so basically, if you go to uh, www.skewdrop.com, and I think, Alex, you, you'll you put a QR code on the screen. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll do that. And, and that'll take people to the site. Skewdrop.com, um, you can sign up for an account. Um, if you use the code SKUDROP12, we give you 12 months um, free subscription. There's a $9.99 subscription um, for the service. And on the website... We've got all our fees as well. And I just want to touch on our fees because it's a really simple fee structure. So basically, if you send one carton or 10 containers to Skewdrop, there is zero receiving fees. We do not charge for that like every 3PL in the US. Right. Well, I shouldn't say every, but most of them charge a receiving fee, trust me. Um, storage rates is... 49 cents USD per cubic meter per day, which is extremely cost effective. And a prep fee of $2.75 per cut, which is pick, pack, prep, and load. Got it. That's all our fees. That's all our fees. And then obviously we've got the shipping, which you see in the pricing there. And that's it. It's a very simple model in terms of pricing. That's all on the website as well for people to check out. We've even got a really cool shipping calculator as well where you can sort of look at the weekly model and check out pricing. That's really cool. You drop 12 is the code and you get 12 months of um, subscription free for the year. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So let's sum up. For everyone listening and uh, watching the podcast right now, if you really want to save on your costs, if you want to improve your profitability, definitely check out SkewDrop. Uh, use the uh, code for the free period and uh, give it a shot. Um, I really do understand that uh, there's a lot to be improved always in all areas, you know, of the business and all the costs, expenses, and everything that you can actually uh, try and improve yourself because there are things that you can manipulate and there are fees, for example, from Amazon that you cannot change. But everything that you can try and change, you should definitely do because it's something that affects your bottom line at the end of the day. So uh, I um, thank you once again, Michael, for presenting our uh, viewers with this opportunity. Besides that, I have probably one last question. It's kind of personal. It's not related to SkewDrop. Um, you as a seller, you as someone that found a solution and you know uh, created uh, a service around it, um, what motiv motivates you most in your work? What do you enjoy most? I'm driven by the end result. That's my fuel. Like I, I sort of look at the end result and work backwards. Yeah. So for me, the end result is is obviously, you know, maximizing everyone's supply chain efficiency, you know, across the entire Amazon landscape. And, and that's the end goal. That's the end result. And then... Everything we do on a daily basis, the fuel that drives me is achieving that end result and getting critical mass and um, being able to, you know, 
have a little bit of a say in someone's profitability by having a more sufficient or a more efficient supply chain. That's what motivates me to keep on going every day is the end result is the fuel. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Uh, no maybe there's anything else you would like to share with our viewers and listeners? Um, yeah, just um, thanks very much for taking the time to to listen to me and, and obviously look at Skewdrop. It's a really interesting model. It's capturing the attention of the entire Amazon ecosystem. Um, Alex, we'd love to have you in our community in Australia as well. We've got a, a community, Endgame Network. is a Facebook group and we'd love to interview you. And um, we put on a very large um, Amazon um, event yearly it's in november this year all right could um, you tell us a bit more about know, the event for anyone interested yeah so it's called southern seller fest um right. the website southern sellerfest.com it's on um in november november 10 11 and 12 this year last year we had um the event we had over 300 sellers and it's not me saying it. it's a lot of our international speakers like we've got kevin king coming this year adam yes. runcris all the major speakers um, and it's been sort of known around the world as the number one event for last year, and we're going to um, improve it even more this year. So it's a huge event. Every massive speaker you can think of is coming to our shores in Australia and Sydney at the ICC. <laughs> www.southernsellerfest.com is the website. So it's a really cool event. Any Aussies watching this who are in Amazon FBA, make sure you're there. <laughs> All right. And if you're overseas, come and fly over and see our beautiful country. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I really hope that yeah. I will be able to do that one day. All right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Everyone, check out the event also. Check out Skew Drop. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much once again for coming to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, really uh, something that uh, we never talked about before uh, here on uh, my uh, on my experience with the podcast about improving. You know the logistics chain and I really feel that yeah. it's uh, value material thank you thank uh, I you. wish you good luck with the event uh, good luck with spreading the uh, skew drop model uh, through the world <laughs> best of luck thank you yeah thank you so much and thanks everybody for listening thank you bye bye and that's it Michael thanks again for coming to the podcast it's been a great talk I suggest everyone see what SkewDrop is about. If you're a private label seller, check out the software, see if it can help you save some money on your transportation costs. Because as you know, there are a lot of things that need to be taken into account when you are calculating your profitability, your overhead expenses, your Amazon fees, and other um, types of costs that you have. And if you can work with these costs and reduce them, why not? So I suggest see SkewDrop, see if it can help you. And besides that, if you haven't tried Sellerboard by now, go to the sellerboard.com demo account and see how Sellerboard can help you understand your numbers, increase your profitability, and automate some of the processes inside your Amazon business. All right. Thank you for watching and listening. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.